we see ourselves on the cusp here of modernising and transforming the Australia-UK relationship. We've signed up the free trade agreement, but only does it give the best access in terms of, of, of products and goods to the really exciting creative stuff of services, innovation, the mobility pieces. And so we are determined to highlight what benefits are available and the pathways so that everyone in the audience and at home can be aware of and take advantage of the really fundamental benefits. And what's great about this series is that you're about to hear from the deep experts who have not have been closer to the negotiations and formulation of the FTA. Mobility is not something it's not about the bottom of the tree, it's not as if it's on here. It's a two way for you to the knowledge, the skills, the expertise. So we did a publicity financial survey recently, and 78% of organisations who use mobility and um, believe that they have a strong return. Investment. 93% of individuals who go on a cross border move believe that it's life changing. Both the economies, the UK and Australia, are very, very large services. Probably about 60% Australia and 72% UK. I guess streamlined mobility settings can certainly make a huge impact in terms of where businesses choose to make those investments. As part of this negotiation, it's part of the FTA. We focus very much on creating certainty for our services providers so that Australian companies in the United Kingdom will be treated no less favorably than the United Kingdom companies and vice versa. The thing we often talk about with this FTA is it is one of the most comprehensive FTAs, and I'd actually say that the mobility uh, provisions in the FTA are also very comprehensive. We're talking about um, Individuals from the early career stage, uh, you know, the youth mobility, work holiday maker, um, going up to 35. We're talking about businesses at different points of their journey. So, whether you have a contract, so you want to come to the UK to deliver that contract with provisions. If you want to come and establish a business in the UK and you, you want to come and maybe test the market, there's provisions. If you're an established business and you want to bring in executives and skilled, uh, skilled professionals in, there are provisions. All these changes mean that there's more flexibility for people to choose what pathway suits them um, and for us to work within that system to make sure we get those people moved as efficiently as possible um, and, and again continuing those people to people things. But it is actually a really exciting time for us to work in this space and I think a lot of the benefits that we've seen come under this FTA in particular um, are a really good starting point for how can we uh, look at some of these changes and make them more efficient across the board. It's not just uh, professional bodies coming together, it provides a framework, a government to government framework within which those professional bodies can meet and where we can come together through the professional services working group to uh, address barriers on a government to government level, working with the professional bodies. So it's going one step further than the normal practice where it is just a professional body to professional body. This is a uh not a lecture, it's very much a discussion and this free trade agreement is a starting point and the Chamber of Commerce, um, our job is to also facilitate that discussion and feedback. Mm -hmm.